A real good friend of ours flew up from Pensacola. His name's Dale Henry. He is the best I know at what he does. If y'all would give him a round of applause because we're going to do something that we've never done before. So I want to ask you to close your eyes. I want you to think of your little girl. I want you to think about your little boy. I want you to think about your grandson. I want you to think about your granddaughter. No one will ever hurt them, will they? You would die before you would let someone hurt your little girl. Please open your eyes. Before every ball game, Coach Bryant would look at us and he would say, in this game, there's going to be four or five plays that will determine the outcome of the ball game. You don't know if you're going to be the hero or the goat, but rest assured, these plays are coming. If you will, I want to tell you about one of the plays in my life. I'm one of the oldest guys in the room, but I do have a good memory. Don't say anything. My wife's going to tell me no, but I'm walking through a courtroom, and uh, I'm going down the hallway, and there's a little girl sitting there, and this is what our family does. When we hear about a child, we don't say what they do, what's wrong. We just say, where are they? That's our only question, and that's what Brody and Reagan do every day. Say, where are they? Where is this child that needs help? Where is this little girl, this little boy? And I, I just looked down at the little girl and I said, are you okay? And she looked up, she had kind of a honey blonde hair and, and green eyes. I just remember her eyes were so green. But, but I've, seen, I've seen abuse for 44 years and I can spot it. I can spot it in your eyes, betrayal. How, how do you give a child that's been severely hurt hope? We can't, but there's a big guy that can. And that's why I just said, come here a minute. And I picked her up, and when I picked her up, I, I felt something in my rib cage. She had a pouch on the side of her body because, see, her father had raped her while her mother held her down. She's 12 years old. She's 12. She's not supposed to have to do stuff like that. She's not supposed to have to worry about going to sleep tonight. We're adults. They had to do a hysterectomy to put her back together. She's 12. The judge walked by in the corridor and I said, Judge, let me have her. He said, no, you've only got a boy's ranch. I said, I'll take her home. Me and my wife will adopt her. He said, no. I, 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 had no, I said, judge, if you send her back home, the father will do this again and kill her in six months. I was wrong. Three months. And the mother held her down again. And this time, when the dad got through, he, he, he choked her to death. She died because there wasn't a place for her to go. When we first started the ranch and my wife and I were dating, we had five boys with us everywhere we went. Girls were not even on the screen, but there's those plays in your life. And that little girl changed our life. I will never be the same. My little girl's here. I would die for her. So would you for your daughter. But you know, some of you have got adopted children. They're your little girl. You love them just like you love a biological child. But ladies and gentlemen, behind us, this picture, I'm the only one that ever saw Shelly. And um, when you come to the girls' ranch, you drive in on Shelly Drive, named in her memory. And I gotta tell you, it's the coolest thing in the world to have a little girl that's kind of being stupid, not being very smart. And I would take her out and I would take her to the front gate and I would show her that sign. I said, this little girl right here, she never got the chance you're getting. But can I tell you what I know? I've embarrassed God every day of my life. But I know I'm gonna get to go to heaven one day. 
And there's not a doubt in my mind. There's a little girl named Shelly sitting in Jesus Christ's lap. And he's got his arms around her the same way I did the day I got to hold her. And there's a verse of the Bible that says, What man meant for evil, God meant for good, the saving of many lives. Genesis 50, 30. I'm going to back up again. What man meant for evil, God meant for good, the saving of many lives. Many of you have been with us for years. Some of you we've met just tonight. But you know what? You and I are in the business of saving lives, giving a kid a chance. And there's a picture being drawn. Dale said you cannot turn around and look at it. <laughs> because I remember her eyes. I remember her face. I remember her hair was dirty because um, no one cared what she looked like. No one cared about her clothes. Some of you have got daughters that are gorgeous. Some of you have got daughters that you think is gorgeous. <laughs> but I don't care where you are in this room. I just want to be honest with you. We can't do what you can do, but our family has put a little thing together called Big Oak Ranch. And that verse, for well, they should be called Oaks of Brass of the Calling of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Every child we go get out of a situation like that, when they get a chance, we get to see them grow. We see them make it. Matter of fact, we've got former residents that used to live at Big Oak Ranch here with us tonight. I'm not going to point them out because they're on their own now. I'm done with them. <laughs> but you know, at the end of the day, you and I, we're just tools in God's toolbox. I wish I could make it complicated, but we are just tools. I cannot tell you how honored we are to have you here, but I want to flip it around. I want to ask you, what would happen to your little girl if something happened to you? Who's going to take care of her? We will. We'll come get her. There's a little girl that came in. Her grandmother was beside her. And she said, Mary, I want you to listen to me. Now, Mary, you see this man right here? This man will never be drunk. This man will never have drugs in his system. This man will never beat you. This man will never let anybody hurt you. This man you can trust. The little girl looked up at her grandmother. The grandmother was old and she couldn't take care. She couldn't take care of her anymore. She loved her granddaughter, but she was too old. The little girl looked at the grandmother, looked at one of our house dads, looked at the grandmother and this great big smile came over her face and she ran and jumped and wrapped her arms around this man, this stranger. You're going to get to meet some of these men tomorrow that love our children. But you love our children and that's why you're here. We have seen over 2,000 children. Our first kid is 62 years old. And many of you should have been our kids. I understand that. <laughs> but can I ask you to do one thing in closing? Close your eyes again. For some of you, it's maybe been a long time since you prayed. But would you use my words? Dear Lord, thank you for my little girl. Thank you for my little boy. Let me be a better daddy. Let me be a better mama. Because Lord, you gave me my children. You gave Shelly a situation that was out of her control. But God, she's in your arms now. Thank you for my family. 
in Christ's name. Amen. Dale, can I look now? <laughs> um, that's what she looked like. Thank you. It's going to be a great night.